Good morning and thank you again for joining us. This is Mark Morris with Word of Faith Fellowship. I'm here today with my very good friend, Butch Maltby, and together we are so glad to be with you and share with you the many things that have been going on in our lives at the Word of Faith Fellowship. I want to start off today by reading you some quotes about our church, Word of Faith Fellowship, here in Spindale. So I'd ask you to listen carefully to these words. This church should be burned and the pastor killed. That's our pastor. That was a quote by somebody named Legate Alicard in response to hearing some of the lies against our church in the media. Next quote. I want her beheaded. Real talk. That was a quote by somebody with the name Jay Miller in response to a YouTube video. Another quote. I wish somebody would blow that church up because the church is Satan's church. That was a quote by someone named Jared Klontz on Facebook. Another quote. Can we just look, can we just lock this horrid woman up and bomb that place? This is no house of God. That was a quote by Cher Lynn Johnson on Facebook. A response to her quote from somebody named Tammy Parker. I totally agree. Bomb it. Another quote. Place needs to shut down and burn to the ground now. The satanic female in charge needs to be Locked up for life. That's a quote by someone named Buddy Davis of Facebook. Terrible. Next quote. Burn the church down. Drag those. Profanity. And beat them to death. That's a quote by somebody who went by the name The Shadow Walker. Uh, based on a YouTube video. Next quote. And listen closely, please. If a pitchfork and fire torch group was coordinated to show up on their doorsteps to run them out, I'd be the first in line. Run them out old school. That's a quote by someone named William David Greenleaf in response to a Daily Curry article. And the last quote. This place should be burned to the ground and the leaders hung, prosecuted, stoned to death. That's a quote by Cody Hughes that was posted actually to our church's Google page as a comment. What I have read to you today is a very small fraction of the hundreds of that's right. If not more quotes that have been made against our church and social media in response to the many lies that have circulated on the media against our church. Now, all of the quotes that I've just read have something in common. Number one, they have incited hate and violence against our church. And number two, all of the names that I've just read to you are people that we have no idea who they are, and these people don't know who we are, to the best of our knowledge. These people have never been to our church. These people have never taken the effort to find out what our side is. These people have never taken the effort to examine what the motives are of the people who have made these false allegations against our church. These people have not taken the time to fact check anything, and yet they have made these allegations. The other thing that these quotes have in common is that they have all been the product of the media campaign against our church That's right. that has in incited hate for years. Justin Covington, a church member of Word of Faith Fellowship, was on the last four radio programs, and he shared about his family that has left the church. And specifically, he shared about uh, a large family that was in our church 
the Cooper family uh, that had nine children. They grew up in our church. Most of them married in our church, went to the Christian school, went on to college, and were very part, of, very much part of our church. And eventually this family left our church, and they left with their wives, and, and then they had children and so forth. So it was a large crowd that left when you do the math. And in addition, some of their extended family left as well. And Justin shared about what he has seen with his family and how certain family members have banded together and orchestrated a very serious campaign against our church to destroy our church. And they've run to the media and they've run to every news source around and they have continually, repeatedly uh, told certain allegations. And the allegations that they have said have used key words and the key words that they have used are words that are inciting hate and pulling on emotion. They've accused us of things like child abuse. Uh, they've, they've made allegations of, uh, of us being a cult. And they use these words, child abuse, cult. And, and others uh, have joined in with them that were former members uh, that, were, that were in some way related to them or maybe friends and so forth. And so this group has banded together. And so you see these names uh, in the last news articles for the last several years. But what's important to notice is the language that is being used and how the effect of it incites mm -hmm. hate. Uh, they, they grab hold of the words and then the media goes with it. And it's, it's astounding, Butch, to do a, a count uh, of how many media outlets have embraced <clears throat> these allegations. And so you see these words, and the other words you see are things like control. The pastors control us and mm -hmm. take our money. So you're seeing these words that incite hate, that provoke. Mm -hmm. I looked up the definition, Butch, of incite. It means to provoke, to mm -hmm. inflame, to fuel, to arouse, to work up. Mm -hmm. And so you see this campaign using these words. And so what's happening is you'll have a news story and someone will make an allegation against our church and use these key words. And then you have these comments immediately on Facebook and an immediate response. Right. There's no time for our church to respond. There's mm -hmm. no time for us to uh, defend ourselves. There's no time for somebody to even fact check. There's no so time for somebody to verify. What you have is a, a group of people in society to, who hear something negative mm -hmm. and they run with it. They don't do any examining or checking on the facts or verification of the information or scrutinizing of the person saying it. It's just as simple as this. Somebody can grab a microphone today and speak into it and say something against somebody else. Or somebody can get on the computer and just begin to type something on Facebook. Right. And there's a group of people in society who go right with it right. because of these terms that are used to provoke and pull on emotions. And when they go with it, it frenzies them up into some kind of mob mentality. And then all of a sudden you have people calling to bomb our church and to drag us out and to stone us. Right. Uh, here we are living in modern time today. We have laws. We have a court system. We have uh, it's set up with the whole concept of the presumption of innocence until proven guilty, and yet there's a group of society that completely ignores it and throws it out the window. And what they want to do when they hear these, the, these allegations, because of the wording that is used, hmm. child abuse, right. they begin to say, well, if somebody's accusing you of child abuse, it must be true, and therefore let's do the next thing, and that is let's get on social media as... Uh, Sherry Lynn Johnson, and we have no idea who she is, says, let's just go ahead and bomb the place. Right. Right. And then somebody joins in and says, let's burn it down. Uh, this group 
uh, that has been on this campaign against our church uh, for several years actually had a forum, actually had two forums against our church. They came here to this county, uh, they advertised it, and they, they, they had this forum, and they were going to speak out against our church. And so right. they live streamed this on right. the Internet, and uh, they, and Butch, you went to, I, I think. I did, yeah. And, and so... Uh, as one of the forum organizers was speaking, Benjamin Cooper, this is one of the family members, uh, I want to read to you a quote that as he's talking, live yeah. streaming, here's a quote from somebody, again, we don't know who these people are and they don't know who we are. They've never been to our church. They don't, I, I, lo- I mean, let them meet me and I'll talk to them. I don't, I'm not part of a cult and we don't <clears throat> abuse children, but but they but they, they run with it. Now, here's a quote from somebody who is listening to this forum they're taking in all these allegations, and 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 they're 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 all of a sudden fueled and incited. This is real time, Mark. This is they're real responding time. right away. This is this is real time. And here's the quote from somebody named Christopher Miller. In real time, it says she should be shot. And then Don Randall, we don't know who these people are, responds and says Jane should be shot talking about our pastor, Jane Whaley. Now, the speaker at that moment was Benjamin Cooper, talking about our church. So there's an incitement going on. There's no judge. There's no jury. It's simply, you hear an allegation. Right. And let's go ahead and shoot somebody. Terrible. So our church is witnessing... A very dangerous Mm -hmm. and a very serious trend that is in society today. We're seeing it right here in Rutherford County against our church, Word of Faith Fellowship. Have we not seen this trend, though, Butch, in society today? We're seeing it in the news. Uh, We're we're seeing where you have a news story. There's a recent one that was the young men in the March for Life in Washington, D.C. And and you have uh, a, a portrayal, one portrayal a twist, a slant uh, of how something is, and then everybody immediately runs with it without doing any fact-checking. Why? Because there are certain words that are used to provoke uh, right. a, a, a response. In, in some cases in the recent news, it's been racist. Well, right. all of these words are words that in, in, engender a, an emotion, a response, and so... There are people, there is a group of people out there who go right. with it. Now, now we've all heard the old phrase uh, in tongue-in-cheek that right. if it's in the Internet, it must be true. It must be true. If the Internet says it must be true, and we right. all chuckle at that. But, ladies and gentlemen, there is a large group of people that believe it, and, and things are actually getting very serious in society today for those who do believe these allegations and the response is a frenzied up call for That's violence right. uh, and it's alarming. Do you have something to add to that, Bush? You, you know, I, I just want to say this real quickly. One of, the, uh, one of the real counterweights to what we're seeing in our community these days is just the wonderful work, Jim, that you, you do here to be civil, uh, to be caring, and, and to be kind. And, you know, I remember, Mark, in June of 2017 when I first came to this community and I saw the moniker, I saw the moniker, a small town friendly. Mm-hmm. And these days, I'm wondering, how did small town friendly become big city hateful? Because the comments that you're describing here are nothing less than the same kinds of things that the Nazis said about the Jews. Go back and read what they said. Yeah. We're going to get rid of their businesses. We're going to burn them. We're, we're going to put them in, in, in ovens. There, there's a lynching taking place in this county, and it's reflected in the social media comments against our church. When you can make the unthinkable thinkable, the untenable tenable, you know, the, the ungodly godly, who would ever, and I've done this with media people now, just as a congregate in our church, I've shown them these comments that you've read so well here, so powerfully, Mark, mm-hmm. and I've said, is there any circumstance under which a human being w- would make those comments about someone else? And the answer is an unequivocal no. But we're allowing this to take place because we're in a media culture where people feel like if it's on the internet, it is social media, I'm anonymous enough where I can just say it. Right. And you know, Mark, I used to consult for the Southern Poverty Law Center when my politics was different, my hair was longer, and I wasn't following Jesus the way that I am now. And in that environment, we used to have a hate watch. 
Why? Because there were protected groups in this country like the LGBTQ community, African Americans, migrants, and others who should be, you know, there, there's protection there. There, there are legal constitutional protections. Right. Our church has not had the benefit of that. If we were a mosque and, and AP picked up this story, it would be a trending story in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. But we're not a mosque. We're in Western North Carolina. And, 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 and people are very much driven by a bully mentality. I remember Alex Chicos in the fourth grade. He was a kid with a club foot. And I watched the fourth grade classmates of mine make fun of this young guy. And I remember standing up in front of the class saying, you're not gonna do this anymore. I was in the fourth grade and I was shunned by everybody because of it. We have a situation in our community that is just irresponsible. We cannot be a small town friendly community espousing Judeo-Christian values and let this kind of thing happen. And so the David Wheelers of the world, you've launched a new transparency and let's make the community better. Speak out against this. Yeah. You know, anybody who was in a position of authority that would listen to this or know now that empirically this is being done and you do not speak, you are just like the people on the sidelines who watched at Dachau and Krakow and other places, Jews being put into camps. And so we're not going to bend, we're not going to break, we're not going to be uncivil, we're going to allow our lives to be driven by biblical truth, which is why those of us that are at Word of Faith Fellowship go, Mark. That's right. So That's right. And, uh, you know, if I can add to that, that we have so seen in our society for many years back this presumption of innocence uh, and how, you know, America was built on these principles of, of law and justice. And so... So, and I see it as an attorney, the presumption of innocence is a principle that goes back thousands of years. Right. Uh, you're presumed innocent until proven guilty. You know, and I actually think about it, it's actually in the Bible. It goes back thousands and thousands of years in the Bible. I was just, I was actually just thinking about it in Proverbs where it says that uh, the man who pleads his case first uh, seems to be right until someone comes and cross-examines right. him. So there's the whole concept of you hear one side of the story, but then let's hear the other side of the story. And this is this is a principle that has been true for many years. But but this mentality of you just hear one side right. and you just run with it. You know, I want to read another quote to you, and this is um, from when the AP uh, did a series of articles against our church, and one of the articles was on accusing our church of having slaves. Now, mm -hmm. some of you may remember that. Uh, this was in 2017, and so you may, re we have covered this on our radio program many times, uh, but the allegation was that there was a church in Brazil that we're affiliated right. with, and some of their young and people- there was a pipeline. Pipeline, and, and some of the young people there wanted to go to college here, and they would come and stay at our houses, and while and we they took were here, advantage of it. We and... were making them work and all this stuff. Well, so, so here is, when that aired, uh, I want to read to you. There was a lot of comments against our church about that. Uh, One-sided, biased story uh, by just this small group of people that, are, that have, a, have this megaphone, as, as Butch likes to say sometimes. So here's a comment uh, that is made by someone, uh, and, and it's a response to these AP articles. It says, all members of this fake church, mm -hmm. no exceptions, no exceptions, should be immediately and publicly executed on site. Unbelievable. Okay, so so he's calling for all of us. Now, our church is, we're over 500 members. Right. In our church, we actually have 130 plus children. Right, just line them all up. So so this, and I'm gonna give you his name, and I'm gonna spell it. It's, it's Y-O-W-A-N-E Haku, H-A-K-U, H-A-K-U. I don't know who Mr. Haku is. He's never been to our church. I, I don't know if he's ever talked to anybody in our church. We have no information of that. But he believes, after watching uh, or reading this AP article, right. that all members of this fake church, right. no exceptions, right. should be immediately and publicly executed on site. Those, those are elders, too, in wheelchairs. These are the, your grandmother, your grandfather. And, and so we have, uh, you know, based on all of this incitement, our church has had, we have had people who have come and exhibited very dangerous conduct. 
And so you, you see there's, a, there's an, a net effect here. You have one, an allegation is made with very provocative language inciting hate. Two, people comment on it and call for violence. And then you have three, violence occurs. Right. So you see the pattern. There's a sequence. And, and so, our, you know, let me just tell you some of the things our church has been through as a, as a product of this. When we started having these allegations come out in the media and, and people were frenzied up and they would make these comments. I remember uh, when, when we were actually getting out of church uh, and this was, uh, I believe it was a church event of some sort. And we had all of the children in our church, and we're going to our cars, and we have a parking lot around our church. And here comes uh, some young men in a truck, and they were flying around our church park- parking lot at very high speeds. With children. With, with children walking to their cars with their parents. They're flying at very high speeds, and they're screaming profanities. We have had a shooting where there is a, a church where some of our church members live in uh, at the same street as our as our church facility. And there was actual church sh- shooting it, it shot into the house while our church member was in the house. And we've had vandalism. We've had people come down and, and shoot paint guns and throw eggs and, and, and people come down repeatedly and yell profanities. And, and we've had a breaking and entering. All of these things have happened since these allegations have heard. And so we as a church have had to utilize church security. Well, we're finding out that so is just about every other church in the county. Exactly. And, and, of course, uh, yeah. you've seen this. You've been in large churches. I grew up in a very large church in Los Angeles. Right. They, had, they had an enormous church right. security staff. Well, church security has been around for a while, and it's probably going to uh, even even grow in that sense. But... But we have had church security uh, for our safety as a result of these comments. As I said, we have 130 plus children mm. in our church, and we have a Christian school. They're there every day. And we have had people come to our church who have, uh, we had one person in particular who came and, and wanted to go up to the front microphone and get, give a word of the Lord that, that fire was going to come down and, and, right. and yelling things. You right, know. and burn everyone up. Burn everyone up. So, so you're having here. You are. You're having these comments of let's just burn the church and kill the pastor. You know, I w- let me just read. Just you know, here here's another one from somebody uh, whose name is Sam Ivy, and he says th- this is in response to to a, a media article against our church. This is ridiculous. I say we burn the place down. That's what Jesus would do. Right. Well, that's you know that's not what Jesus. That's would not do. what Jesus would do. And you're talking about a place where there's hundreds and hundreds of people, including children. Let's just burn it down. But you know, one of the things that you see is there's still this attitude, especially with churches, where you can actually say something negative against a church, and people really run with it. Uh, because it's a church, and right. and so there's there's you say a statement, and it feeds on some bias that somebody has. Now here's a comment from uh, somebody in response to allegations against the church. Here's a comment from somebody named Heather Robinson, and here's what she says after reading a, an article against our church. She says religion should be gotten rid of. Period. Right, all of it. This church should be burned down, if you ask me. So so the again the response Just there's a incredible. bias there. Uh, you say something negative that's not true against our church, and here you go. Somebody says, well, let's just get rid of all the churches. You know, let me point something out to you. The, the, one of the allegations that so is incited hate is that we have child abuse at our church. This right. is a, and, and so those words provoke emotion. I mean, I'm, a, I'm an attorney. I deal with cases where there's child abuse. I interact with social services. I interact with law enforcement. Uh, child abuse is a very serious allegation, mm-hmm. and uh, it's it's real, it's heartbreaking. It's always heartbreaking to see when a child is abused. Now, here's what's happened: these allegations have been made, and they provoke uh, this image of our church. 
So we have had social services investigate our church on numerous incidences where these people have lobbed these allegations. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've thrown open our, our church doors. Anybody who would Very be transparent. named, come on in. And, and DSS has come in many times because <laughs> these people are, let's run to the DSS and make these allegations. Of course, DSS will always follow protocol. Anytime they have an allegation, they will come and they will do the investigation. They follow the protocols. Uh, they, they, they've... They meet with the people. They meet with the children by themselves. And so and at every point, uh, everybody in the church that was accused of anything was cleared and right. there was no abuse found. Right. Law enforcement, they come in. There, there's no abuse found at every single point. But yet it's still paraded around and they use these words of child abuse, even though there has been a, a, a an investigation that was thorough and people still believe it. They don't listen to the whole truth. Let me go back and point out, when I was reading to you about the comment that this person named Mr. Haku made about our church, we should all be executed and shot. He reads that we have slaves. And, and he goes on, and I find this very interesting because, uh, again, there's no... There's no judge and there's no jury and there's no investigation. Right. Let's just go ahead. If there is a comment made, let's go ahead. He said, he said, all members of this fake church, no exception, should be immediately and publicly executed on site, as should all proven beyond doubt slavers. And in this case, you can prove it beyond doubt with absolute live physical evidence more than three years worth. So he is saying, in this case, with our church, you can prove that we are slaveholders right. uh, because of the evidence. That, well, has he looked at the, has he talked to us? No. Has he come and, and, and actually, now, now here's what I want to say to you listening today. There was an investigation as to whether there were slaves being funneled uh, to our church from Brazil. Mm-hmm. I, I can't I can't help but just I can't even believe I'm saying this about our church because our church is I mean we so love all it's of a these, loving the, caring community these people that came uh, that were coming to to be students here we we so love them and they were part of our family but uh, even when I read it I just can't believe that the allegation was made so there was a very thorough investigation done in Brazil by the Department of Labor because when the AP came out with this article. Uh, that there were slaves being funneled from this church in Brazil to our church, and they come here and they're being made to work as they're going to school. Um, the Department of Labor in Brazil did a very thorough investigation. Uh, there was a court case that was brought, and a judge presided over that matter, and, and the judge did an extremely thorough um, uh, analysis of the case, and both sides of the case presented evidence, live testimony. Right. And, and it was and considerable. And, and, it, and it went on for a long period of time. There was a, a very large amount of evidence that was presented, and both sides had their say. Uh, and so the conclusion was by the judge was that there was absolutely no uh, slavery going on. Okay, there's the conclusion. Now, Mr. Haku wants to say, if you hear an allegation... Let's go ahead and execute everybody on the spot. Right. But yet, after the allegation was made, there was a judge that ruled after hearing both sides yeah. that it was false. And now you hear the sound of silence. You know, that's not a good story for the media to pick up on. That's right. Exoneration is not a headline they want to print. That's right. So, so we just want to point out that we have used this radio program to address the allegations. And, and we have appreciated the time. We've appreciated being here on WCAB. But, but we've actually had over 190 uh, people on this radio program from our church, current members from our church, who have shared their hearts with you. They've shared their testimonies. But they've also addressed the allegations with you. So what's interesting is you hear this really small group of people that have incited this hate with They're their just words. They're just loud. They're loud. And, and, and you have, the, and Justin was on this program. He did a good job explaining. It was this core group of family members, and then you, you add their wives, and then you add some of the, and then they've pulled out some other people with them. And so you have this group that they, they, they run, and they run, and they run, and people go with them. Well, well, you've heard the truth on this radio program, and you can also go to our website because we've recorded all of these live video and so you've heard from 
190 people who are saying this is not true. Now we've had on this radio program from our church, we've had we've had doctor lawyers, uh, uh, we've had business owners, we've had teachers, we've had nurses, we've had uh, <coughs> carpenters, we've had uh, cabinet makers, we've had everybody from every form of life come on this program. We had a, a retired school principal, uh, a guidance counselor. I mean, we you know you name it, we've had it on this program, these are members of our church who have children in church, and they say, absolutely not. Our church is so full of love. Yeah. We would never allow abuse. That's right. We, we would never be in an environment where we, we, there, it's a cult where people control you and take your money. Um, and, and they've shared about how they, they, they've they never found so much love it's true. anywhere else other it's than true. this church. And, and so they've poured their hearts out to you. Well, a, a number, that many people, 190, far outshadows the small group that has run to the media and used their megaphone, it no far question. outshadows it. But yet, but yet people are wanting to hear the one side and they're wanting to burn our church down. They're wanting to bomb it. There's another comment here that says, I think that it just needs to be blown up because it's not going to stop any other way. Right. Uh, and another comment that is made, you know, instead of saying that I think it should be burnt down, here's, here's Keisha Harris who says, I say we we burn that place down. Right. It's a conspiracy right there. So so you're seeing a pattern of people who although you have evidence presented contrary, although you have a judge who hears it and rules against it, although you have social services uh that investigates and finds that there's no abuse, you have all of this evidence that shows that this is not true. You have people who are calling for violence. And Butch our time has flown by. It, it, it sure has. But you know what? Truth has a way of making a place in the hearts of people that really want truth. And truth has been presented here today again, Mark. And you know what? I, I, I love listening to the radio. And it's it's a blessing to be here with you today. Yeah. And, but, and let me just add, if I may, just real quick in closing. What we want to say at, at Word of Faith Fellowship is we have no animosity None. for these people. that I have I've listed their names only to show that... Uh, we just didn't know who they are, and they don't know who we are. We have no animosity for any of these people. These names that I've read, uh, maybe they'll listen to this someday. We we love every single one we of do. you. We and, do. And truly, our heart goes out to all of these people and everyone else who has sided in because the, the, the re reality is that you have believed a lie, and God is a God of truth. God doesn't want us to be deceived. He loves us. And he wants us to have every part of our life That's in truth. Right, and, and we want to encourage you, all of you listening today, God loves you. And he loves us here at Word of Faith. That's and right. he wants all of us to be people who live in truth. And he said that he will tell us the truth. He gives his Holy Spirit in John 16. And he says that his spirit leads us into all truth when we ask him. So I want to encourage you today right. that, that if you will say, God, show me truth. Show me what truth is in every situation, in everything going on in the world today, everything in the media, everything in your life, in my life. God wants us to know truth at every part. Amen. And we thank you for listening. We appreciate your time.